Margot, a second-year college student, works part-time at a movie theater. It was here that she first met a shy man named Robert. Late in the evening after work, Margot was returning to the campus when she suddenly heard strange sounds, which turned out to be coming from a dog. Thinking that the animal was homeless, Margot out of pity let it into the dormitory. However Laura, one of the students, noticed this and reminded Margot of the rule, no pets are allowed here. Margot had no choice but to return the dog to the street. During the night, Margot was awakened by the dog's whimpering and someone's plea for help. Ahead in the corridor, she saw that the dog had attacked Laura. It turned out to be just a nightmare. In the morning, Laura came to Margot's room to make sure she hadn't secretly brought the dog in. Margot has a best friend, Taylor, who is a moderator on a popular website. Margot is studying archaeology and in her free time as usual works at the movie theater. This evening she met Robert again, who often comes here. Feeling a spark between them, Margot imagined walking into the movie room right during the screening and sat down next to Robert. After the show, Robert asked her for her phone number. Since then, they started texting each other every day. Despite the age difference, Margot felt attracted to Robert. Firstly she liked tall guys, and secondly the fact that Robert had many cats. It meant he was caring. However, Taylor asked her friend to be cautious, as she still didn't know Robert very well. Margot didn't take these concerns seriously, continuing to actively text with Robert. She waited impatiently for messages from him and would get nervous if he didn't reply for a while. When Robert suggested going for a walk in the middle of the night, she hesitated at first but eventually agreed. Margot trusted that Robert wouldn't harm her. She finally melted when he handed her a bag of treats. Margot invited him to the laboratory where she was doing research. Both of them felt awkward because they hadn't interacted much in person. Margot decided to text Taylor that Robert was here. The message included a joke about Robert possibly being a serial criminal. When they found themselves alone in the storage room with historical artifacts, Robert suddenly locked the door. Margot panicked while Robert denied it was him, claiming that the door had locked itself. Thinking that Robert had done it deliberately and wanted to harm her, Margot threw a tantrum. To calm her down, Robert had no choice but to break down the door. In doing so he accidentally shattered an ant farm. Almost the entire ant colony including the queen perished. Dr. Enid Zabala was deeply disappointed as she had raised this colony for 17 years. Both Margot and Robert were very ashamed. Afterward, they walked in silence on the street. Margot broke the silence first, thanking Robert for the treats and apologizing for her reaction in the storage room. They decided not to consider this their first date and start over. Margot expected a kiss, but Robert never took the first step. During the vacation, Margot went home. Throughout this time she continued texting with Robert. Of course the parents noticed that their daughter did not let the phone out of her hands. Today is Ernie's birthday, Margot's stepfather. Everyone is nervous about the upcoming party. Ernie who is turning 60, doesn't want anyone to mention his age. Margot's mother decided to have an open conversation with the daughter, believing that it's still too early for her to get into serious relationships, especially since she doesn't really know Robert well. The party was a lot of fun. Later after leaving the guests, Margot chatted with her ex-boyfriend Clay, who shared that he no longer felt the need for romantic relationships. Clay didn't want Margot to think it was because of her. But Margot was understanding. At night she couldn't sleep, and wearing beautiful nighty, took a selfie and sent it to Robert. However, she never received a response. Margot was coming back upset because Robert continued to ignore her messages. She didn't understand what she had done wrong. Finally she received one message from Robert, saying that he was busy at work. However, Margot doesn't know exactly where he works. The semester began. During a break, Margot shared with Taylor that Robert was avoiding meeting her. Taylor thinks it's wrong that Margot always initiates contact with him and insists on meeting up herself. However, Margot was determined to see him again, so when Robert suggested going to the movies, she agreed without hesitation. In the evening, Robert waited for her on the campus. Finally after several weeks apart, they met. Margot got into Robert's car without fear. However deep down, she understood that anything could be expected from Robert. In the cinema, Margot watched enviously as couples romantically shared popcorn from the same bucket and cuddled. But Robert was completely focused on watching the movie and didn't notice Margot's attempts to get closer. After the screening, Robert realized that Margot was upset about something. He genuinely had romantic feelings for Margot and didn't want her to feel uncomfortable around him. Robert suggested going to a particular place, but the girl was not allowed to go because she wasn't yet 21. Up until that point, Robert had thought she was older. But in reality Margot was only 20. She couldn't hold back tears, feeling foolish. Robert found this touching and couldn't resist kissing her. It was the worst kiss in Margot's life. She would never have thought that such a grown-up guy had no experience at all with such things. They went to another bar. 
Margot ignored a call from Taylor. Robert brought drinks, and Margot raised a toast to him. Later while in the restroom, Margot called the friend and told her everything that had happened. Taylor realized from Margot's voice that she was drunk and advised her to call a taxi immediately. However, Margot had very different plans. She found Robert nice and amusing. Margot was sure Robert would be grateful to her and it would strengthen the bond between them. They arrived at Robert's house. He was clearly nervous. Inside it was quite cozy. Margot asked Robert about his cats, but he either didn't hear the question or simply avoided answering. Taylor was worried about the friend and kept texting her. Margot still had suspicions that Robert might not be who he claimed to be, but she tried not to dwell on these fantasies. Robert suggested going to his room. Margot agreed, even though the inner voice told her not to do it because Robert was not the right guy at all. What if he was dangerous? Margot realized too late that she shouldn't be here. She was too afraid to upset Robert, who was acting very clumsily. All Margot wanted now was to leave as soon as possible. It was the worst decision she had ever made. When it was over, Robert suggested watching a movie. Margot had been frantically thinking of an excuse to leave the whole time. It was only now that she learned Robert's real age. It turns out he was 33 years old. This was an unpleasant surprise, Margot had thought he was much younger. Robert is convinced that something truly sincere has started between them. Margot is the girl of his dreams. When Margot said it was time to go back to the dorm, Robert was upset. He had thought Margot would stay until morning, and he would make her breakfast. Margot said her friend would worry. Robert drove Margot after all. On the way, she feared an aggressive reaction on his part, but Robert remained calm. As soon as Margot entered her room, she received a message from Robert. Now he definitely wouldn't leave her alone. The next morning the usual routine began for Margot. She wanted to forget about last night like a bad dream. In the dining room during a break, Taylor asked how everything went. Margot confessed that it was just awful. Meanwhile, Robert continues to flutter with messages. Taylor suggested blocking him on her phone and social media, but Margot thinks it's too harsh. Only now did she realize that she hadn't seen a single cat in Robert's apartment. Taylor considered this a troubling sign. Perhaps he had intentionally lied about the cats to appear harmless. This meant that Robert had something to hide. Margot ignored Robert's messages all day, but he was too persistent. Margot felt powerless anger. In the evening, she was going to send Robert a long message about being busy with her studies and unable to see him. However when Robert sent her a cute video, Margot couldn't find the strength to break up with him. That's when Taylor decided to take matters into her own hands and snatch the friend's phone from her, locking herself in another room, where she sent a message to Robert on behalf of Margot, saying that it was over between them. Margot was very afraid that Robert in his grief might harm himself and was very nervous waiting for a response. Taylor was there to provide support throughout. Finally a response came. Robert wrote that he was sorry but wished Margot good luck. At that moment, Margot felt a mixture of relief and guilt. Some time later, Margot and Taylor were drinking at a bar with their student friends. At some point, Margot noticed Robert here and quickly left. The friends left with her. On that same evening, Margot received a message from Robert, who had spotted her at the bar tonight after all. He wrote about how much he missed her and wanted to talk. Taylor advised her to ignore it. Meanwhile, messages from Robert kept coming one after another, but now it was not harmless but offensive. Robert thought that Margot had a new boyfriend and was jealous. Now walking down the street late at night, Margot always felt in danger. When she saw Robert in the parking lot near the movie theater, she got scared, but he just drove away. However, Margot was afraid to return to the campus after work alone. She felt like Robert was stalking her or waiting around the next corner. The situation was further exacerbated by the fact that Margot's phone had run out of battery. When Margot heard the sound of a car engine, she panicked, started running and called the police. However, the officer didn't see any evidence of a crime since Robert didn't even approach Margot. Maybe he had just been drunk yesterday and that's why he sent all those offensive messages. But this didn't make Margot feel any safer. She developed paranoia. In self-defense, she and Taylor went to a gun store and bought several pepper sprays, as well as a bug. Margot wants to make sure that Robert is genuinely stalking her because the police think it's just her imagination. That evening, the friends had a falling out. Margot doesn't like how Taylor goes overboard in her desire to control everything. Taylor on the other hand believes that her friend is living in a fantasy world, detached from reality. Late at night, Margot rode her bike to Robert's house to plant the bug on his car. At the same time, Taylor entered Margot's room because she had forgotten her laptop charger there. Not finding her friend, Taylor became worried. Meanwhile, Margot sneaked into Robert's garage when suddenly she heard a dog growling. In front of her was the same dog she had seen earlier on campus. Robert appeared, thinking that burglars had broken in. But instead of burglars he saw Margot, 
who accused him of stalking her. When Robert approached too closely, she pulled out the pepper spray but accidentally sprayed it on herself. Concerned Taylor caught a cab. She doesn't know Robert's exact address, just the street. Margot woke up on the couch in Robert's house. He demanded explanations from her, already knowing that she had tried to plant the bug on his car. Margot wanted to leave, but Robert wouldn't allow her. If the police saw Margot in this condition, they would consider him guilty, no matter what he said. In such cases the police always believe the woman over the man. Now Robert just wants to understand one thing, why did Margot send him all those affectionate messages and give him false hope if she actually despises him? When Robert called her a liar, Margot in tears said that initially she was sincere, but she became disappointed after that night. Margot didn't say it right away because she didn't want to hurt Robert's feelings. When Robert offered to wash her face with a saline solution, Margot thought that girls had pepper sprayed him before, so he knew how to administer first aid. But in reality Robert knows this only because he's a nurse. It never crossed Margot's mind to ask where he worked. Now Robert definitely cannot let her go just like that, because she will immediately go to the police and tell her version of events. Margot promised not to do this and offered to make a contract, but Robert can't trust her anymore. When Robert went into the other room for a while, Margot tried to go out the front door, but it was locked. So Margot was going to call 911. Seeing this, Robert snatched her phone. A fight ensued between them. Robert couldn't allow Margot to escape, or everything would be over for him. By the way in Robert's house, there is indeed at least one cat. Margot tried to escape through the garage, but Robert caught up with her. During the struggle, they accidentally spilled flammable liquid and caused a fire. The door and windows were locked. Robert tried to call for help, but no one heard his screams. When Robert opened the lid of some hatch in the floor, Margot found it suspicious. Could it really be his victims in there? Robert shouted that time was short and asked her to trust him, but despite the critical situation, Margot had doubts. Eventually when the flames grew stronger, Margot had no choice but to go down as well. Seeing the fire, Taylor asked the driver to go there. By morning the firefighters had extinguished the flames but found no one. Taylor could only hope for the best. Suddenly one of the firefighters shouted that someone was in the basement. Opening the hatch, they found unconscious Robert and Margot. Learning that they were both alive, Taylor felt immense relief. Margot woke up in the hospital. Her family was already here. After some time, Margot was discharged from the hospital. Passing by Robert's burnt house, she felt guilty. Margot only knows that after the incident, Robert resigned from the hospital and moved away. Margot returned to work at the movie theater. A handsome guy asked her for the phone number, and that's where the movie ends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.